Right. Ukraine is urging its citizens to get out of Russia as the tensions mount. It's getting harder to find a flight into the country. KLM's halted them until further notice. The Lufthansa Group, including Swiss International Airlines, Eurowings and Austrian, is halting flights to Kiev and Odessa until the end of the month. And Air France has cancelled all flights yesterday as a precautionary measure. The Latvian carrier Air Baltic says it will no longer fly to Ukraine at night, but it's added daytime services to Kiev to meet demand. Martin Gauss is with me, the chief executive. He joins me from Finland. Martin, um, obviously you've obviously had the same discussions that with it internally, with all, as all other airlines have. Why have you decided to keep your Kiev flights for the time being? Um, 24 seven, we are in contact with the relevant authorities, uh, not only in Latvia, also internationally, also with the conflict zone hub at Ayasa. And we're monitoring it every minute. Uh, and that's why we took a decision to not uh, overnight anymore. So these flights are taken out, but we are serving Kiev from Riga and from Vilnius. We also fly to Moscow and St. Petersburg, and we have the demand currently in both directions, uh, but we're monitoring it and we are fueling the aircraft so that it could even in the air return and we, we stay in touch with our aircraft all the time. So we are prepared for anything at any minute, but we are still offering the flights and we still receive also significant bookings for both directions. And all this is happening, of course, as travel is, is, is returning, in a sense. Uh, the rest of the the rest of the network is picking up. Do you worry, as I suspect would be reasonable, that if the situation in Ukraine deteriorates, that will put off passengers elsewhere? Uh, we don't see that yet. Actually, we have uh, in the current week, uh, and we already have that conflict going on now uh, in the media for a while, we, we saw 500% up in bookings compared to last year, which was our worst year. So we actually do not see that. Uh, of course, we fly to the Ukraine, we fly to Russia, and if things would escalate there, uh, that would have an impact. But if we look at our overall program, we serve 80 destinations. I do believe we would uh, offset that with additional frequencies uh, into Mediterranean destinations for the summer. And what is it, as, the, uh, as an airline in flying in a difficult part of the world, just coming out of the pandemic, what is it you now require? What is it you need from policymakers as they're trying to put together what the post-pandemic world looks like for aviation? Um, of course, uh, less restrictions on all, all the pandemic issues. As, as soon as restrictions are lifted, we see the bookings going up and, and we can actually see this now as most European countries are now easing it or have given dates when they re release restrictions and that immediately leads to bookings. So I think all airlines now see that we are coming out of this pandemic and all we need is the stability that we are not uh, bringing back rules which make it difficult to travel. But we see a surge in bookings now compared to last year and that is because people see that everything is opening in Europe. So if, if it continues like this, uh, I see a very positive spring and summer coming. Martin, thank you, sir. Forgive me for keeping it briefer than normal, but we are waiting for the Pentagon briefing, which is due to start in just uh, three minutes from now. So I'm grateful for your time, sir. Thank you.